This video uh, will introduce you to uh, mating techniques for the corner brackets to the extrusions. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to build the incomplete frame. So let's log in again. So I went to SolidWorks.com slash academic dash cloud and I got my login uh, frame. So I'll log in. We've done this before, so this should be pretty straightforward to you. I come in here. I want to find out all my roles. So I go up here to this little uh, compass, and I click the center of it, or that triangle, and voila, I'm over here. So I'm a 3D designer here, and you should be one too. I'm going to go down to X Design, which is in my applications. I'll click here. And then I'll bring up X Design. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to make a new component. And the new component is going to be in my personal space. And I happen to be the leader, but you'll, you'll be something else. So I'll do this. And what do I'll do it? I'll call this Challenge 2. And I'll put my initials in it just so if somebody needs to see which Challenge 2 it is, they'll see it's mine. So I'll go this. We wait for it to load. And remember, I like to click the X up here so I can get as much working space as possible. OK, we're going to build an assembly. So we have to look at here. We move from sketch to assembly. So I click on assembly. And now I'm going to put the two components in. Let's get the extrusion first. I go over to this big list that is contributed by all kinds of people, but I don't want this big list. So I go up to my 6W tags, click here. I run down here, and I'm just going to pick up the part that, that that's my part. And that's Charles Williams. And that has a lot of stuff in it. But the most thing, most important thing it has, it has the library that I'd like you to use. So I run down here and I look for extrusions. And I find, let's see, I have a 120 millimeter one, 120 millimeter one, and a 225 millimeter one. I'm going to pick up this one. And so I'm going to insert it. Now remember, that is inserted and it's anchored. OK, so see the anchor here for for the for the uh, extrusion, which means that extrusion will not move in the uh, in this three space. And it's going to be up where it is here. And that was determined by the person who made the uh, the the model. And that was probably somebody over at Rev Robotics. So now I'm going to pick up the uh, let's take a look at the extrusion before I pick up everything else. So I'm going to run over here, flip this thing over. Now, how am I flipping it over? I'm moving the mouse, and I'm pushing down on, these, on the scroll wheel, and then I move the mouse while I hold the scroll wheel down. Now, I want to zoom in, so now I turn the scroll wheel towards me. And remember, where I put the mouse determines which way this thing moves. It moves away from the mouse. So we open it up here, and we can see this extrusion. And it's called an extrusion because this, this aluminum is actually put through something called extruder to make this kind of funny uh, cross, uh, cross section. So we look in here. We bring it up a little more so I can click on this. And that's a cross section of it. The thing that's important with, with this system, and I hope you've already read the Rev Robotic stuff in it, that between the, in this area, we could put a screw head. And what that screw head would do is that would allow us to, uh, to affix uh, devices or p components or parts to the face to these two faces. Similarly, we could do the same thing. These two faces... And then, of course, to the faces that around here. So all four faces, we can basically hang stuff off of this. And by screwing it down, we can, we can um, make sure that it's going to stay there. So we're going to be putting some things on here. And the first thing we're going to put on is we're going to put on a, um, 
on, on a bracket. So let's move out a little bit so we can see the bracket when it comes in. Again, I go down to my insert. I hit the button. I go up with this big long list again. Don't worry, I'll just do me. And then I'm going to look at some brackets. Now, this isn't the bracket I want. This isn't the bracket I want. This one looks cool, but it's not. It's this one. It's this 15 millimeter inside corner bracket. I'm going to click on that, click OK, and then I bring this thing in. So there it is. So let's take a look at the 15 millimeter corner bracket. It has, the main thing it has is, let's roll it around. It has some holes here. See this hole and this hole? Those are for the screws to go through. Then it has these little cogs. And these little cogs are sticking out. We can see them. They come away from this face. See how they stick out? And so what happens is those little cogs go into this channel. And so that keeps the thing from twisting. Uh, on, on the extrusion. So we're going to do a mate on this thing. And so the first thing I'd like to do before I mate is let's figure out what side I'm going to mate. So I'm going to mate the bottom of this, okay, along here to the top of that. So I go into my tools, or my, my tools, and I pick up the mate, that little paper clip. And then I'm going to check, I'm going to look at this. And so I'm going to specify one of the mates is going to be the top of this. So this, this bracket will install on top of the extrusion in this perspective. I'm going to flip around here. And remember how I roll it. I'm holding down the, uh, the, the wheel, scroll wheel, and I'm moving this. In order to move it to me closer so I can actually select this, I'm going to go like this. And then I'm going to say that this face is going to be the face I'm going to mate with. Okay, once I have the two faces, the face on the corner bracket and the face on the extrusion, now I can pop over here and say I want those things to be coincident. In other words, I want them to be one uh, face, one on top of the other. So I make it coincident, and then I'm done with that. So now I roll over here. And I'm, I'm partway through, roll this thing back. And so now this face is in the same plane as this face. Now what we're going to do is I want to turn this bracket a little bit. So when I do the next um, uh, mate, the bracket will be pointing in the proper direction. So what I'm going to do is I go to the bracket, select it, hang on, stop this. I go to the bracket, I click it, and then I click on this little thing. And this is that one that starts that triad, the ones with the arrows on it. And also there's some arcs on it. We're going to pick those up. So there's this triad here, okay? And so this is an arrow, this is an arrow, and this is an arrow. But also there's some arcs that are drawn here, and they're kind of hard to see. But let me flip this thing around. Okay, and let me look at this arc. This arc is the arc that allows me to rotate this in this direction. So I'm just going to rotate it around. I'm holding down the uh, left button, and then when I'm done, I just click out here. And now I'm done. So what I've done is I've rotated the bracket. So the bracket is about in the right position. It need not be perfect. As a matter of fact, it's off by about 15 degrees. But it gives me a place so, so that when I do the next mate, this bracket's going to be in the right direction. OK, so the next break mate is going to get those little bumps on the back of the bracket to line up inside of this channel. And so the way we do it is we go under the bracket. So again, I'm going to push down the wheel on my mouse, bring it up here, and then I'm going to go under, and I'm going to continue to go under until I can find the face of one of these little bumps. And right there is the face of the bump. So I can click on that. And now, after I have that face, I can run down here and click on the mate. 
So now I have one of the faces. Now, where do I want that face to be? I want that face to be on the inside of that uh, channel. So I'll move this down. I'm going to rotate everything around so I can see the inside of the channel. And then I'm going to zoom in on that channel. I have to get big. Remember how I'm zooming? I'm, pull, I'm pulling the, I'm turning the mouse wheel towards me. Now we'll see the inside of the channel is this area. Okay. And so what, what I find is up here, let me take that away. Do you see these two lines? I have a line here and I have an edge here, these two edges. What, my, what I do is I just pick the top edge to be the mate for the little bump on the uh, bracket. So I do this. So I'm, I'm mating a face to an edge, and I want to mate those, see this face to the edge, and then I want to mate those coincident. And so I put it coincident. Okay, so now we are finished with that mate, but I still don't see the bracket. So I run down here, and here's the bracket. So if I were to take this bracket and move it, this bracket, because of the two mates, is, is constrained. So it's sitting on top of the extrusion, and it's centered in, that, um, in the um, channel, in that little slot in the extrusion. So now I pretty much have it fixed, except I have one problem that that bracket can move along the channel, as you just saw. So, for example, if I were to move it here, it moves back and forth on the channel. If I want the bracket to be at the end of the channel, I'll do a third mate. And so that kind of makes sense. You need three mates because it's three dimensions on this thing. So I'm going to go down and pop down a third mate, and I'll come up here, and I want it at the end so that this face is in the same plane as that face. And so I select those two faces, and then I go up to coincident, and then apply it. And so now I have it sitting right there. Hang on, let me bring it back. OK. So I have it there. Now, sometimes we don't want it to be at the end of, of this, um, of this um, extrusion or the bracket at the end of the extrusion. We, so how do we fix that? We pick up the, the last uh, mate we put in, which is this one, and see how when we select coincident three, it uh, pops up there as, as it tells me what that is. And I'm going to just hit the delete key on my keyboard, and there it is. So now I can move this back and forth. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another mate, a different kind of mate. This mate, again, will be this mate, okay, this face, and I need to zoom in to make sure I get this face, this face. And instead of making a coincidence on this thing, I'm going to run over here, and I'm going to pick a distance. I'm going to specify a distance. So I pick here. And I'm prompted for the distance. Currently, the distance between those two planes, as defined by those two faces, is about 8.5 millimeters. If I want to make it more, I can simply do something like this. I can make it 20 millimeters. And then I will apply that. So I can move that mate front and back. So I don't really want the mate to be, you know, I, when, we're, when we're building this, it turns out the mates want to be uh, pretty much at the end. So I'll go back into distance. And I'm going to get rid of it. So I just right, I right clicked it and got this little pop up. I deleted that mate. I'll go back in. I'll pick up the mate. I'll pick up those two faces again. And then I'll make them coincident, so I'll have something to do. Okay, so I think that's basically how to do it.
And so the, the problem is it's tedious. Oh, what did I just do? What I did is I didn't accept the mate. I canceled the mate. So I better go back in here. And I'll show you what the mistake was. I was busy talking rather than thinking. I'm going to pick up these two faces. I'm going to say I want a coincident mate. Okay. And that looks good. And I press the X to cancel rather than the, um, it, rather than the check. So check. Now I have it. Now, what I was going to, what I was saying, you need to mate uh, four of these corner brackets into into these extrusions, and we'll find it's just tedious. Then you'll find out you'll make lots of mistakes, and you'll just have to keep on doing it again and again. So it's it's and you might trust me, is that this is important to do this because you need to get. Uh, skills when you're dealing with the mouse, when you're rolling the uh, figure, when you're repositioning the 3D model in the space, and all of these things. So stay with it and take it slow, and you'll be able to to do this. Uh, you'll have so basically you have four extrusions, you have four of these uh, corner brackets, and of course, and what you have is you have a total of eight faces. Uh, to extrude. Why is this important? Because we're going to use this as a uh, base for some of the uh, other projects we're going to do in the future. So make sure you save it. So I'm going to run over here and remember I pick up this little save and I'm going to save it and now I'm saving that component and guess what? I think I'm good and ready to go. So thanks for paying attention. I hope it makes sense to you and the main thing to do is to play with it do this mate that, that I just did, these, the, the one corner bracket and one extrusion. Do it three or four times before you actually start building things. So you start, so you, uh, the silly mistakes that you make start going away. Okay, with that, have fun.